everybody, it's Jake Mace with jakemace.com and phoenixlongevityarts.com and I'm here today to answer some of your emails and some of your questions. I have been overwhelmed by your guys' questions and comments on the email and I'm so sorry if I haven't responded to you yet. We're trying to get to everybody. We get hundreds a day um, over on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash jakemace.taichi. We also get a bunch at our email which is at phoenixlongevityarts at gmail.com or you can go to jakemace.com and email me at jakemace.com and if you email me at jakemace.com my lovely wife Pamela monitors those emails and your email will definitely get answered if you email me at jakemace.com so the best place to email me is jakemace.com or is on facebook.com slash jakemace.taichi I'll be doing a whole episode like this, a question and answer uh, next week uh, with just Facebook emails only. There's a lot of them. So let's get to it. Uh, there's a bunch of questions, comments, and um, items to cover. And I'll do my best to uh, answer them. I'm not uh, the most knowledgeable person out there about everything, but I'll just give you my experience and you guys can take it for what you will. The first email we have here is from James. And it says, what would you say is the most diverse and interesting weapon you've trained with? And I teach about 25 different traditional Chinese uh, Kung Fu weapons, uh, like, the, like the staff and the broadsword and the straight sword and the nunchucks and uh, the butterfly swords or butterfly knives. We also do the cane and short stick, the Quan Dao or the Guan Dao and uh, the Gwen and the Qiang, the spear. But I think that the most diverse and interesting one is the chain whip. I think that for me, when I first learned the chain whip, I felt, man, this is a weapon that I could really get into. And I love just all the sectional weapons, like the nunchucks, three sectional staff, chain whip, and rope dart. I just think that chain whip is probably the one I've practiced the most and the one that I love the most. And I think that chain whip is so diverse, so unique, so interesting, and it can be used in a smacking motion or a shooting motion it really has a lot of uh, diversity of its attacks. So that would be my answer, James, is the Chain Whip. And uh, look out coming up in the future for our Chain Whip DVD. We're almost finished filming, and then we'll have the DVD that you can order. Uh, not only will there be Chain Whip spins and shoots and techniques, but also Chain Whip form, a traditional Chain Whip form on the DVD. You'll be able to order it as a download on jakemace.com, but also you can order it as a DVD to be shipped to you. We already have four DVDs you can stream or download at jakemace.com. Combat Tai Chi, uh, Yang style Tai Chi, the Bow Staff, and Iron Bone. And uh, Chain Whip will be our fifth DVD. The next question is from uh, Sudhin Das. And it says, Sir, I want to know about the meditation. This is important in martial art, why? So meditation, I think that Meditation is important no matter who you are. I think a lot of people, uh, instead of meditation, they do prayer or they do activities that allow them to be by themselves for long periods of time, like hiking or sports, like golf and things, where they can just be by themselves in a natural setting and try to return to their uh, cave man or cave woman or animalistic roots. So meditation is that. I think it's a return to your roots. I think that meditation allows you to have that five minutes to 60 minutes or more a day of quiet time where you can just sit and not be reached by phone, not be reached by text, not be reached by Facebook and you can just sit in nature with some loose fitting clothes, with your eyes closed, with some good airflow in the room or outside. And breathing is the most important part about meditation because it allows you to kind of get in touch with your natural life force. So go to our YouTube channel and check out a bunch of our meditation videos. Just type in Jake Mace Meditation on YouTube and you'll see some of our meditation videos. And we'll give you a lot of meditation examples and samples that you can practice at home. So for the martial artist, meditation allows you to focus at a greater level during your martial art practice. So if you're in a fight, or if you're in a combat situation, or if you're in a sparring match, the ability to stay in control of yourself and use the adrenaline 
the situation brings up as a resource to make you stronger, faster, and more creative, meditation helps you gain that ability. So meditation helps the fighter by giving you control of your emotions in a stressful situation. But then meditation also helps your body heal after the rigors of martial art practice. So when you're abusing your body with all these different conditioning exercises and martial art forms, meditation is one of the ways, in addition to eating nutrient-dense food, meditation is one of the ways that you can uh, allow your body to relax to such a high level that you'll repair from the rigors of your training faster than you would doing something else. So I think med meditation in, uh, in its essence is a way to harness your power during a fight, but also to repair your body like Wolverine or like the T-1000 after a hard day or a hard week or hard month or hard year of training. The next question is from Garrett. And Garrett asks, Hey, I'm Garrett. I just found out about this website and your YouTube channel today. I'm a martial arts enthusiast, even though I'm not that skilled yet. I was wondering uh, why do you do martial arts and what got you interested in Kung Fu? And so, hey Garrett. Well, what got me into martial arts was my parents as a kid. I was like eight years old when they signed me up for martial arts in British Columbia, Canada. I think I was doing uh, Kyokushin Karate at the Steveston Community Center in British Columbia, which has like a little Japanese cultural center, and they do martial arts classes at the Japanese Cultural Center in Steveston, kind of by Richmond, Vancouver area, British Columbia. And I got signed up as a kid. And I can remember learning some basic uh, karate forms, doing a couple tournaments for sparring and for uh, form, for kata. But I remember most clearly the sensei weighed like 300 pounds. He was a very, very heavy guy. And his son was in the class and was about my age. And his son was very flexible and could do the splits. And I remember that I was so afraid because the sensei would walk around the room and he would sit on the shoulders of the kids who couldn't do the splits and he would force them into the splits. But I was so afraid of being sat on by my 300 pound sensei that I went home every night and practice the splits as hard as I could and then that way I could always do the splits in the class so the sensei would pass me up and wouldn't sit on my shoulders. So that's, I mean, that's where I got interested in doing the splits, kicks, and flexibility was thanks to my gigantic sensei. But then my first love in the martial arts was wrestling. In middle school we did wrestling um, kind of just for fun and in high school I got really into it. And I had a great coach my uh, freshman year of high school at Brophy College Preparatory School in Phoenix. And the coach's name was Ed Connect, and he was fantastic. He was a really great uh, wrestling coach. There's also another coach named uh, Coach Santoro over there that was really good too. And then I left that school and went to a different school uh, my sophomore, junior, senior year. And the wrestling coach that I really got involved with uh, was Dave Wilson. He was a great wrestling coach, was an amazing wrestler. And I just was so into wrestling. I wanted to go and wrestle in college and get a scholarship for wrestling, but I ended up breaking my arm and uh, couldn't continue wrestling. So I went back to coaching wrestling for my high school team for a couple years, and that was fun too. Then I got involved in some adult tournaments and things like that. But uh, when I was 18 years old, but when I was a teenager in high school, um, I wanted to cross train for wrestling by getting a little bit tougher and I wanted to join a martial arts school that was in a, the worst part of town in Phoenix that I could get to uh, so that I could get kicked in the head a little bit and get tougher because in my opinion I was a good wrestler, I was uh, strong and I was technically good and I had uh, good endurance and a good command of my body but I wasn't the toughest guy around, I was always kind of a nice guy so um, I wanted to have that like some of these guys were just so tough they could give a shit about me and they just wanted to hurt you and I wanted to get some of that. So I wanted to join a martial arts school and get tougher and I went and joined a Chinese Kung Fu school in uh, kind of a you know really uh, central part of Phoenix and that was it. I just kept doing martial arts when my arm got broken I kept doing martial arts and I've done it ever since. So. That's a little bit of my history with regards to Chinese martial arts, Japanese martial arts, and wrestling. But also movies. 
you know, as like anybody else, the reason why I went to a Chinese martial arts school is because of Bruce Lee and because of Jackie Chan and because of movies. Next question from Steve. And Steve says, Hello Jake, I was wanting to know how long would it take to learn Drunken Fist and Wing Chun uh, for someone who is dedicated. Also, what is your pricing like? Thanks, Steve. Well, Steve, that's kind of an open-ended question. How long would it take to learn Drunken Fist and Wing Chun? I'm still learning Drunken Fist and Wing Chun. So, uh, I think if forever is the answer. It's an ongoing process. You know, you could technically learn Drunken Fist and Wing Chun in 30 seconds by watching somebody else do it, learning from a friend or a seminar or watching somebody online or a book. But I've never learned really anything offline or in a book form. I've always learned from people in person as part of classes or part of seminars or part of uh, a workshop and things like that. So uh, Drunken Fist has an incredible system of Kung Fu that is under the umbrella term Drunken Fist. There's eight Taoist Drunken Immortals. They each have weapons and empty hand styles of fighting that they both uh, train. And some of them are male, some of them are female. So the Drunken Fist is an incredible system. Also very good for flexibility, very good for posture, and very good for long-term physical health because of the flexibility that the Drunken Fist commands from the person performing it. And Wing Chun only has three traditional forms and they're not that challenging. They're not that hard mentally. They can be learned in an afternoon. And so Wing Chun has a lot of uh, good fighting facets to it. It likes the close range type fighting that's very center line and very much into blocking while you strike at the same time. And I think that they all have you know, good attributes and I'm a firm believer that every martial arts style is great. It just depends on if the person that teaches it to you is great. You can go to 10 different Kung Fu schools and have 10 different experiences. So I think that the person teaching the martial art is the most important thing. Before you get involved with Drunken Fist or Wing Chun, get to a school or a program where the teacher that you'll be learning from aligns with the morals that you're looking for and that you believe. Make sure it's not a culty organization that's gonna kind of brainwash you and cultify you into their organization. Make sure that it's uh, something that's fun but challenging at the same time. It's gonna test you physically, mentally, and emotionally, but also make you come back because it's fun to do. And that the teachers are uh, somebody that you aspire to be like, and they're not gonna to try to brainwash you into following them. So there's my little advice for you. The next question is from David. And David asks, I've enjoyed many of your segments on YouTube. I was wondering what your martial arts background and experience is. And I just kind of touched on that in the two questions ago. Uh, one thing I, did, I didn't touch on was my teaching experience, my teaching background. I was like 20 years old when my teacher here in the Phoenix area couldn't run uh, the school anymore that had been around since 1991. So it had already been in existence for about 10 years when I took it over. And he was a firefighter, he was a really good guy. He was also named David. And he was a firefighter who couldn't balance family and firefighting and running a business. So I was his head assistant teaching a lot of the classes when he couldn't be there for the firefighting. So he asked, you know, do I want to keep it going? And that way, I think he also wanted to keep the school going because he still wanted to train, just not in the ownership role. And I was like, hell yeah, because I love doing this stuff and um, I want to stop working and do this full time. And the only thing I could think of was teaching classes that would allow me to practice as my full-time job. I think it was a really bad idea. I think I shouldn't have said yes uh, because I didn't know anything about running a business. And I think that running the school, which at the time was called Chinese Shaolin Center, then we changed the name of it to call it the Shaolin Center of Martial Arts and now it's called Phoenix Longevity Arts. I think that um, running my martial arts school has limited a lot of um, other things I could have done but it's also given me a lot of opportunities like traveling and meeting a lot of people I would never have met otherwise and staying in great shape for, for a living. So it's pretty cool that my job forces me to work out for my, for my living. So there's a little bit of my background with teaching. And now it seems that uh, since the economy has taken a downturn, I've really been trying to shrink the overhead that it takes to run a martial art business. I mean, it can easily be five to $10,000 or more minimum to 
just to pay the bills that it takes to run a martial arts school. That's before personal bills. That's just the bills to keep the school going. Five, ten, twenty thousand dollars. Marketing, advertising, the school, the insurance, the inventory, the um, supplies, you know, the accounting and you know the employees you have, all this stuff. So I found that teaching you guys on YouTube uh, is much better because there's no overhead. I can just teach you guys and if uh, you guys like the lessons, you keep uh, watching and I think it's fantastic. I think that you guys force me to train to keep my skills up and give you good content and then I force you to watch because the content is hopefully worth watching. So I'm loving uh, the fact that we are able to appeal and reach so many of you out there on YouTube and you can watch from around the world. We just hit 100,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. It's so awesome. Next, the question is from Arnaud. And Arnaud asks, I want to start with martial arts and I want to learn Kung Fu. I don't really know a lot about it, so do I need any equipment for the online school? Also, one more thing. I'm not flexible at all. What are some good stretches to do? Thanks, Arnaud. And uh, hey, Arnaud, or Arn is it Arnaud or Arnoud? Uh, I think that these are some great questions. The online school. You don't need any um, equipment for it. He's talking about my online school. You go to jakemace.com and on the home page there is a button that says enter here, click here. You click on it and boom, you're at the uh, home page of the online school. And there's basically six, or excuse me, seven different things you can sign up for. One thing is the month to month membership to be a student online. And that costs five bucks a month. It's so inexpensive. We're trying to price it in a way where we're not making a lot of money off it, but we're um, making enough to pay the bills and everybody who's out there can afford the classes. I think that the classes we're teaching are worth a lot. They're really high quality. We have really good filming equipment, which is gonna get better as we um, have more subscribers. So the more of you that sign up, the more professional that we'll get. And I try to put a good diverse array of content on there so that there's workouts, kicking, traditional forms, sparring drills, two-person sets, tai chi, meditation. We're gonna cover an entire spectrum of different styles of martial arts, both internal, external, and fitness oriented. But you don't really need anything. You need to have uh, ambition, motivation, some chi, maybe some uh, good food to eat, some water. Um, and then you can always uh, get like a stick or a bow staff or the weapons that we have in the videos. So you can sign up for five bucks a month for the month to month online school at jakemace.com or you can sign up for a year for 50 bucks. That will save you 10 bucks. So you can do a year to year, that's 50 bucks a year and you'll be good for the year. You'll have unlimited access to all the videos in the Kung Fu School which are now, we almost have 70 videos up there now. We're hoping to have over 100 by the start of 2015. Then, in addition to the month to month and one year memberships at jakemace.com, you can uh, purchase one of our DVDs to be shipped to you or download it. Two different things. If you order a DVD to be shipped to you, um, it's like five bucks more because it's like we have to pay for the DVD. But if you want to get a little bit of a discount, you can order the DVD and watch it online or download it to your device for 20 bucks. So we have four DVDs up there right now. We have Yang style Tai Chi DVD. We have the Iron Bone, Iron Palm, Iron Forearm, Iron Shin DVD. We have the Bow Staff DVD, both spins, attacks, form, and two-person drills. And we have the Combat Tai Chi DVD. We broke apart some of the best parts of our Tai Chi form, uh, and we are showing you how to use it in a fighting way uh, for self-defense. So the Combat of Tai Chi. Those are your four options, or you can order uh, a DVD package. We package some of them together, and you get even a better discount. So people are loving that so far. The training online is cool. We're gonna always add videos. And once you're in for five bucks a month, you get access to all the videos. If you order a DVD, you get lifetime access to that DVD online, and you can download it, watch it online. Let's say that you're uh, in some other country because you're traveling on business. You can literally just click on your link and watch our videos from your hotel room, anywhere you are. There's no login name or password to enter. They're gonna eat when you sign up. They're gonna email you a link and you just always will copy and paste or click on that link to gain your access. So there you go. Oh, also, 
what are some good stretches to, to do? I would say go on YouTube and type in Jake Mace flexibility or type in Jake Mace stretching or type in Jake Mace uh, kicking workout. And anything to do with kicks, stretching, or flexibility on our YouTube channel is a fantastic set to practice at home. But my secret, I have two secrets to gaining the flexibility that I feel that if I have any flexibility, it's because of these two secrets. Number one, cut dairy products out of your life. Don't drink milk, don't eat cheese, don't put sour cream on your Chipotle burrito. You can still have milk, you can still have cheese and still have sour cream, but make sure it's plant-based. Make sure it's almond milk, coconut milk, soy milk, rice milk. Make sure the cheese is vegan. Make sure the sour cream is like Tofuti brand or something like that, where it's a uh, non-dairy product because there's been so many studies out there that show that dairy in, uh, causes joint inflammation and will make you less flexible, plus dairy products leach calcium out of your bones. And uh, I challenge anybody to uh, disprove me on that in the comments down below. Dairy products, no matter how many commercials you've watched, no matter how many people you've seen that have told you that milk is for bones and dairy is for bones, it's not. Dairy products will leach calcium from your bones and the best way to get calcium into your bones is with plant-based foods like your dark leafy greens. And then uh, my second secret to flexibility is stretching while you're sweating. So don't stretch too much in the beginning of your workout. I want you guys to warm up slow, doing a lot of uh, blood pumping, sweating type cardio activities. And then do your intense stretching in the middle or the end of your workout when you're warmed up and sweating. That's the key. You'll get a lot more out of your stretches when you stretch while you're sweating. The next question is from uh, David. <clears throat> and David says, hey Jake, I'm David. I'm 19 years old and I've been watching and loving your videos. I'm currently training for MMA competitions, but I still have interest in more traditional styles. I was wondering if you'd be willing to take me in for a week or two sometime this summer. If you would, I'd like to know how much you charge for the teaching services and whatnot. I have no knowledge of any family in the area, but I'm willing to stay in a nearby hotel and commuting to your studio. Please get back to me when possible, but I know how busy a Sifu's day can be. Thank you for reading and considering my proposition, and please have a nice day. Thanks, David. There's a lot in there. Uh, so, yeah, I would be totally full of you know excitement if people wanted to come out and train with me here in Tempe, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I teach many different ways. I teach classes in Tempe. I teach in companies um, as part of corporate fitness and corporate wellness and corporate relaxation programs, doing martial arts, yoga, tai chi, and fitness classes. I teach um, some college classes on tai chi and whatnot. And I also teach uh, you guys online and with DVDs. So I don't have a fee that I would charge to come out and train. I just would say, you know, when you come to a class, you would pay the fee that that class uh, charges. So if you wanted to sign up for the college class, you just pay the college, whatever it is, the 10 or 20 bucks for the class. Or if you wanted to go to my botanical, desert botanical garden class, you would pay the garden, the, the 13 to 16 bucks for the class. If you wanted to come uh, train with me in Tempe, you'd pay the 10 bucks for my class. So it's pretty affordable and uh, just come out and let me know when you're going to come out and maybe I can even try to hook you up with one of my students who might uh, work you a deal for um, uh, some stay with them. So just let me know, uh, give me some dates, give me some concrete information and we'll set it up man. It'll be a lot of fun. Next question from Jeremy. I was wondering if you take any supplements with your breakfast and how often should I eat and what quantity if I'm maintaining my active lifestyle? It's a great question. I think the diet for me is such an easy thing um, and here's why. I just always, I don't think about diet as having this many meals a day or eat at these times. I, just, I constantly eat all the time because I'm constantly working out and teaching all the time. If I ever can stop teaching and just do my workout, I usually gain about 10, 20 pounds of muscle and get a little leaner and look a little better. The more I teach, uh, the little bit of the skinnier I look and the less muscular I look because I'm just doing so much for you guys, for the students, and not really thinking about myself too much. I'm trying to give you guys a good class. So it's pivotal that I keep food in my tank all the time and 
it's pivotal that that food is super high in nutrients. So the most nutrient dense foods on the planet are fruits and vegetables, especially high uh, sugar and high energy content fruits and your dark leafy greens like your kale, kohlrabi, collard greens, spinaches, cabbage, um, and other exotic greens like beet greens and uh, bok choy and things like that, like amaranth greens, uh, things like that. So I don't take a lot of supplements. Um, I kind of cycle on and off of a B12 supplement and um, I do that either in a sublingual tablet under my tongue. Usually there's uh, two different kinds of B12, the cyanocobalamin and methylcobalamin. And usually I hear that the methylcobalamin, the one that starts with an M, is the higher end kind because most people use the cyanocobalamin form of B12 and that um, is not as good because your body has to convert the cyanocobalamin into methylcobalamin before you absorb it and you lose a lot of the B12 in that, in that uh, transition. So I always say invest a bit in yourself and get the higher, uh, the higher end kind of B12, the methylcobalamin. And I do it either as a pill under my tongue or I do it as uh, a liquid dropper in my mouth. Just kind of like you pull up the liquid in the dropper and squirt it in. And B12's got a lot of benefits. Just Google search benefits of B12. And uh, I do the B12 for that. But lately I don't even do any protein powders. I don't even do protein powder. I do a lot of moringa leaves off my moringa trees, which I take fresh or powdered. We dry them ourselves. And I make sure that in my smoothies and in my food, I always am putting kale and beet greens and kohlrabi and cucumbers and carrots and herbs like basil and cilantro and uh, uh, different herbs like oregano and stevia. I'm eating a lot of um, greens out of my garden and I grow really good food and really healthy soil with rock minerals in the soil. So I think that you want to try to increase your fruits and vegetables, especially your high sugar fruits that are high in antioxidants and are unique fruits. Every once in a while, do me a favor, go to the Asian market in your town and buy some exotic fruits that you have no idea what they are from the Asian market, then Google search or YouTube search how to prepare them and eat them, like a jackfruit or a durian fruit or some exotic bananas or some mangoes. And that will be such a jump start to your overall health and system. Uh, doing the same bananas and the same apples all the time, your body is bored as hell with that stuff. So you've gotta open your horizons, broaden your horizons, Go to the Asian market in your town or go to the farmer's market and buy some fruits that you don't know what they are and eat those things. And uh, combine that with dark leafy greens, like I mentioned before, bok choy, kale, kohlrabi, collard greens, cabbage, spinach. You'll be on your path to greater health. The next question is from Jacob. Nice name. My name is Jacob. It says, uh, I'm going to be getting all your DVDs and a year subscription to your videos uh, he means on jakemace.com. He says, it all started when I became interested in the bow staff and now that I see everything you do, I want to train hard to be like you. Thank you for being my hero. One day I plan on visiting Phoenix to take a class in person with you. You're great. Keep the videos coming. Hey, thanks Jacob. That's really nice. I love getting uh, messages like this. Even if you don't really have a question and it's just a positive comment, I'm a human being like anybody else. I have emotional swings going back and forth and I try to practice Kung Fu and do meditation to always be in my best state. But getting emails like this where it's all positive makes me, it doesn't make me feel egotistical. It makes me feel just feel happy and feel good about what we're doing. So um, I can never take too much positive uh, emails and too much uh, positive reinforcement online. It's great. So thanks for the email. I don't think there's any question in there. So. I hope that you get the, the DVDs on jakemace.com and I hope that you sign up for the year and I hope that you learn everything. Learn it all. All my teens, all my 20s, I just learned everything I possibly could and was always just in a positive state and I loved it. So get on there, learn from us online and just absorb it and practice it and make it your hobby. Just love it. The next question is from Jared. And Jared asks, I absolutely love your teaching style and technique. I've watched hundreds of videos online of multiple instructors and hands down you are the best that I've seen. If I lived in your area, there's no doubt I would hire you to be my personal one-on-one -on -one trainer. 
As it is, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah and miles from you. I have a few questions for you. I need a target to hit. I bought gloves that you wear on your hands for my opponent to hold up for me to punch or kick. I went to the sports store and there are many options. I was looking at Century's Bob uh, doll. That's the Bob doll that has the cut off arms and the, the muscular stern face, the Bob doll. And he looks like he'd be a great practice target. Not sure what to buy. I would love to know what you recommend. Also, if I did your lessons online, is there any way for me to rank? As of right now, I've been saving my favorite videos of you and watching it on my phone and practicing along with you. Thanks for taking the time to read this email and answering my questions. Be water, my friend. Hey, be water, my friend. Uh, we made that shirt be water because martial artists for thousands of years been, you know, using water as an analogy for the martial arts. And so I think that water is such a great um, thing to think about while you're practicing because it can be soft like liquid and run through your fingers or it can be a tsunami that wipes out entire civilizations in an hour. So I think water is such an interesting thing. Fire is also interesting too. But uh, yeah, I think that the Bob doll is great. I used to have one of those Bob dolls. You can get some of my kicking videos from years ago and I had a Bob doll that I used in the videos. We don't have it anymore, but um, it was a great training tool. I think that um, hanging a heavy bag is great, uh, but not necessary, you don't have to, but hanging a heavy bag, um, I mean, if you look at the old style martial artists that are traditional, they just had a big giant canvas sack filled with sand hanging from a tree and boom, they would hit that sucker. So I think that punching the air, kicking the air, working on your shadow boxing, uh, to an imaginary opponent it's also, is also very beneficial and very important. So you don't have to have gloves or things to hit all the time. Uh, even if you watch some of Jet Li's old movies from the past, like the Shaolin Temple movie, their, uh, their pun or uh, the movie called The Tai Chi Master with Jet Li or Twin Warriors, they, they fasten telephone books or uh, thick wads of paper to a wall or a tree and they just punch the telephone book and the paper until the, the pages get torn away. So there's a lot of different ways you can get a cheap and affordable but effective training tool like a bag or a Bob doll or a speed bag. Um, but the best thing is just to have a buddy come over and put the gloves on and hit your buddy's hands for a bit and make sure they're willing. Uh, anything else in this email here? Let's see here. I love Salt Lake City, Utah. I've been there a, few, a bunch of times and I always I think that city is so beautiful and they always have really good vegan food and vegan restaurants in Salt Lake City. I love that. Uh, thanks for the compliments, Jared, and uh, uh, I hope that you... Oh, oh, any way for the increase in rank? Yes. So at jakemace.com, if you click on the online school, when you click on the online school, you're going to go to a Viddler page because this website called Viddler, they host our videos for us. They provide the interface. So you go to jakemace.com, hit click here and you'll be taken to our, our, our online school. And we do have it right now. We have white belt, yellow belt, white belt, yellow belt, blue belt, green belt, brown belt. And we're gonna add black belt later. And we're slowly, as I have time to film them, we're slowly gonna put our uh, belt system that I use in my program, we're gonna put the material in each of those categories so you guys can actually learn the material. And then eventually, you can send me a video of you performing the material and completing the requirements that are set forth per belt level and or you can Skype me. So you can pay for a Skype session or just send me a video and I will uh, certify you as that rank. That'll be a thing we're going to offer later on so stay tuned for more about that. But get busy right now training what's in white belt, yellow belt, blue belt, green belt, brown belt and beyond because you're going to use that knowledge to advance if you want to later on. You don't have to. Um, we offer it all to you. You can see it all right now. So thanks, Jerry. Great questions. The next question is from Fred. And Fred asked, as someone who has not had one single lesson in Tai Chi, is your combat Tai Chi video uh, a good thing to start with? I've wanted to learn the martial arts side of Tai Chi, but I always want to learn the beneficial movements to help with balance, health, and mental clarity. Is this a good place to start or should I get the basics from some other place first? Yeah, I think that um, our combat Tai Chi is a great place to start. Because in the combat Tai Chi DVD, if you're an advanced student and you want to see my take 
and my um, lessons on the fighting uh, applications and the fighting component of Tai Chi, you'll find a lot of, uh, a lot of cool uh, techniques and cool benefits with our Combat Tai Chi DVD. If you're a beginner, I think the techniques are simple and practical and effective. So it's easy for a beginner to learn. And there's a lot of different lessons on our Combat Tai Chi DVD. So you can just pick and choose as you're ready for it uh, which lesson you want to learn. We also have split that DVD into two different sides. There's the internal Tai Chi combat fighting applications and there's the external Tai Chi combat fighting applications. So you can choose. Do you want to do some sticky hands and push hands with your partner or by yourself? Or do you want to do some more external, more street style Tai Chi fighting applications with yourself or your partner? So I think that's a great place to start, not only for an advanced student, but also for a beginner. And then later on, you can uh, get the Yang style Tai Chi DVD and learn the form, the breathing, the uh, performance side of the Tai Chi. So they're both very, very good. And we're gonna have our Chen style Tai Chi DVD coming out soon. Next question is from Michael. And Michael says, I've been watching and training on some of your vids for some time and the idea for an online school sounds great. Are those who sign up for online classes going to be able to test and earn rank or is it just for the enjoyment of it? I'm curious how, about how it, how it is set up. Is there a set syllabus for learning? Thanks for your time, sir. Yeah, so I just answered that. We're gonna have, uh, we have two different parts of the online school. I believe three parts. One is you can learn lessons out of order as you want to learn them. Two is you can learn in the order from white to yellow to blue to green to brown to black. Or you can order a DVD and focus on one aspect of our Kung Fu training. So it's kind of how you want to do it. We're kind of leaving it very democratic for the student. Next question is from Bo. And Bo asks, I have a few questions about the online training. There appears to be no sash belt requirements. Is this true? Do you plan on having anything of the sort in your program? Yes, we just answered that. Or is the only way to get these is to come to Phoenix? Nope, you can do it online. I have studied martial arts in the past and each time left when blind attitudes of superiority became obvious in the seniors. Accepting the few who were combat veterans from the military, we all seem to dislike the tough guys, quote unquote. I'm currently making time to enjoy Krav Maga classes at a local MMA gym and loved how positive you are in your videos, which I've been following for about a year. The answers to these questions really will decide if I'm going to invest in your classes. That said, the positive attitude is awesome and the fun approach is exciting. Thank you for your time. Um, hey, I just, uh, to Bo, I just met this morning with a bunch of martial art uh, masters and students. And what they're doing is, um, in the Phoenix area, they're opening up like a huge martial art gym. It's gonna have a variety of martial, traditional martial art styles. They don't want it to be like a modern MMA gym. They want it to be like a traditional school. And they've, they've actually got this like huge facility, like an old LA fitness. And it was really amazing what they're doing over there. So I think that's a cool thing. And uh, I was talking with those guys about my teaching philosophy a little bit. And I said to them, you know, I'm kind of a teacher from the street, from the school of hard knocks. And what I mean by that is that I'm a teacher who has had to do whatever I've had to do to make the student learn and improve, but at the same time, make them come back. And those two things are very important. You have to give the student a hard enough class and a good enough workout so that they'll improve. But you can't completely destroy them physically, destroy them mentally, and destroy them emotionally because then they won't come back. The student has to have fun 51% of the time and they have to have hard work 49% of the time. And uh, that way, even the student who is not the most naturally gifted student in the world, if they come back and they keep trying and they keep enjoying what they're doing and they keep training every day or every week or every month with you for a long period of time, they'll get incredible skills. I think it's very important to be humble, uh, to be a real person, to be a down-to-earth, real person that doesn't wear your gi around all the time when you go to like a restaurant and stuff. You gotta be like a normal human being who exists in the earth. But at the same time, have some uh, etiquette and traditions in your class that help the learning process. Teach your students so that they will improve 
they'll get sore, they'll get bruises, and they'll, they'll train so hard as close to that line as possible, but not cross the line into the point of uh, throwing up uh, exhaustion and injury. You want to get them to that threshold and push them, push them, and then have fun at the same time. I think that that's what we try to, we try to convey that in our online classes, and I'm, I'm trying my hardest to teach you guys at jakemace.com, but also on YouTube here, in a way where it feels as if you're right here with me in Arizona training in person. And so I'm trying to make it so that the videos are as if we're just together doing a class uh, with each other. So I'm hoping that you uh, have felt a little bit of that in the videos, the DVDs, and the online school. So I, I agree with you both. I think that's a, it's very important to uh, eliminate that tough guy mentality and be open-minded. You know, MMA, Krav Maga, Chinese Kung Fu, they all have great benefits. It just depends on the teacher who's conveying those arts is uh, a good teacher and a person you want to be like. The teacher is the most important part, not the art. The next uh, question is from uh, Benjamin. And Benjamin asks, Dear Jake, is there any way you can create videos or DVD of all the 49 postures of the Yi Jin Jing that you talk about on your videos? There are so many different versions, um, and I have, that have that, there are so many different versions that I have come across. But yours looks immensely authentic and feels so potent. Ooh, I like that word, potent. Thanks again for all your hard work and effort to bring these skills and teachings to us all. We are very lucky. You are deeply appreciated in the heart, in in the my heart, <laughs> and wish you well in all your endeavors. A king amongst men. Blessings, uh, brethren. One love, Benjamin. Nice. That's our quite a send-off there, Benjamin. So, yes, of all the styles of Chinese Kung Fu that I enjoy training, that I like, I consider the Yi Jin Jing to be my favorite and the most beneficial. So I think that uh, we're going to have a lot of Yi Jin Jing training to come. We're going to have all 49 postures out there. Um, I think there are other postures that are beneficial as well. I actually kind of cycle through about 60, 70, or 80, maybe even closer to 90 different postures now. But I was taught these traditional 49 poses, and I love it because uh, you don't have to do all 49 at once in one training session. You can literally do seven postures on Monday, seven on Tuesday, seven different poses every day of the week, and by the end of the week, you cycled through all 49. And I think that if you want to prevent injury, and you want to be incredibly strong and flexible, and you want to have a strength that is geared toward the martial arts, but also toward living a healthy life. The Yi Jin Jing postures, Yi Jin Jing, those are the perfect postures for gaining that strength. And so I think that you have to make time to do your Yi Jin Jing practice every single day. Yi Jin Jing means the classical muscle tendon change and uh, we will put out a DVD of all 49 very soon. Uh, the next email is from David. And David says, Dear Jake, I started taking karate in Oklahoma City about nine months ago and really started putting a lot of time into it. I got a bow over the summer and found your channel. I learned to do all the spins from you and can do them moderately well. Now, I want to pick up a new weapon, the chain whip. I was wondering if you could suggest a place to get one that is good but not really expensive. I also saw that you had a video with some basic spins, but do you have any videos with beginning katas? How old are you, or excuse me, uh, yes, the chain whip. Uh, we are going to be putting out a chain whip DVD in the next uh, 10 days. We literally are filming it right now. I got a lot of different YouTube videos. Go on YouTube and type in Jake Mace chain whip, and you'll find a bunch of videos, and I have suggestions for chain whip training for advanced students and beginners alike. A lot of people seem to like my video where I have the tennis ball on a string for beginners. So I would use that as a good training tool. A cheap thing too, you can make it yourself at home. But the best uh, chain whips that I've purchased are from uh, Beijing Imports. They're out of Texas and you can purchase uh, stuff from them at uh, buykungfu.com. B-U-Y-K-U-N-G-F-U. Okay, so not F-U, but F-U. Buy Kung Fu with a UI of the UI, B U Y. BuyKungFu.com. The guy who runs that place, his name is Nelson. He's an awesome dude and he sells great uh, traditional Chinese weaponry. And 
Uh, he sells a bunch of different kinds of chain whips. You want to get the nine section chain whip. And I never use the light one. I always use the heaviest one I can get. Um, I'm not really into doing wushu performances, so I don't ever use a wushu style chain whip. I always use a heavy, thick chain whip that has a, a ball bearing handle so that the, the handle will swivel in the right way. Uh, it makes the spins a lot better. So I'll go to buykungfu.com, which is uh, the website for Beijing imports, and check them out. The next question, we'll get to the end here soon. Next question from Mumbai. Mumbai asks, how old are you and what age did you start learning Kung Fu? This is uh, Satish from India. Oh, so it's Satish from India. Hey, Satish. I am 33 years old. I turned 33 last week. My birthday is always uh, either on or a day away from Thanksgiving. So I'm always like a Thanksgiving baby. And I was... Um, a young teenager when I began training Kung Fu but I was like I said earlier I was uh, eight years old when I began doing martial arts as a kid in like kids martial art classes but so eight years old for kids karate um, middle school high school college for wrestling and during the wrestling time I began doing Chinese Kung Fu when I was in high school as a teenager there you go the next question is from is from Was, and Was says, "Hi Jake, do you have a Tiger Style Kung Fu Training Video DVD for sale?" Thanks. Uh, no, not yet, but it's coming. Tiger will be the first animal style DVD that we'll produce. So after Chain Whip is done, boom, I'm going to Tiger. After Tiger is done, boom, I'm going to Yi Jin Jing, 49 Postures. So uh, look for the Chain Whip DVD coming out next, and then look for the Tiger DVD. The Tiger DVD will have tiger conditioning exercises to make you as strong as a tiger at least cl as close as we can get to being as strong as a tiger we're gonna have uh, some traditional long forms of tiger traditional short forms of the tiger and we're gonna have the tiger fighting applications of those forms so you can see how they fight and how they do the self-defense side of the movements so I think tiger is um, my second favorite animal style and it's just so aggressive it's so fun to practice because of the uh, the athleticism and the power that you feel during the practice of uh, Hu Chen, of the tiger style. Next, from Jason. I'm living in New York now and not anywhere near a school, so I would love to get back into Kung Fu. How much are the online classes and how do I register? Uh, you can go to jakemace.com and it's $5 a month or it's $50 for a year, or you can purchase a DVD download. And uh, it's just five bucks every month and you can cancel any time. There's no contracts. You can literally train for a year, for 10 years, for a day, whatever you want. But it's five bucks a month every month or you can pay for the year, which is 50 bucks for the year, which saves you 10 bucks. I can't wait to have you, Jason, training with us. That'd be a lot of fun. You guys will have to send me some emails and give me some feedback of how you like jakemace.com and the online videos there. So check it out, let me know. The next question is from Paul, and Paul says, I need your advice. I'm 17 years old. I want to be a martial artist, but I have only come to this realization now. <laughs> I have never trained or practiced before, but I want to be great like Bruce Lee. I'm fairly fit, but not really good at sports. I'm six foot one, about 180 pounds in, in, in weight. So Paul, we're, we're, at, we're at the same size. I'm six foot one and I'm 190. I was 180. But if, uh, a couple years ago, I decided to put on about 10 more pounds of muscle, so I'm about 190, 195 now. And I'm 6'1". Uh, so Paul, I think you got to have inspiration, motivation, so keep watching your martial art movies and keep being inspired by martial artists. Um, find martial artists who you want to be like, not only in physical technique, but also in how they live their life and use them as your mentors. And then you gotta just join a school somewhere. You can join our online school and train with me online, which is a great way to start. But, you know, training online is fantastic. I think it could be really good. It's, it's the future. But there's also something to be said about walking into a martial arts school and smelling that smell that all martial arts schools seem to have. Seeing people who are wearing geese and they're full of sweat and their belts are all shredded and the white, uh, the white threads are coming through the black belt. And there's something to be said about the sounds and the sights and the touches that are experienced in an actual martial arts school. So 
I'm gonna try to give it to you online as much as I can, but every once in a while, take that jump. Go into a martial arts school and try it out and see if it's for you. And you'll hopefully, hopefully, if the teacher's good, you'll have a good experience. So, and I think that um, I wouldn't be like Bruce Lee in every sense because Bruce Lee was 32 years old when he died. So if you want to die young, <laughs> that's one thing I think to not be like Bruce Lee about. Bruce Lee was famous for not knowing how to rest. And so I think that you do not want to be like Bruce Lee in that regard. You want to also always make time for passive training, which is your resting, your meditation, your Tai Chi, things like that, and recover. But I think that we all should be like Bruce Lee in his focus, determination, his presence, and his commitment to training. So the next question is uh, from David. David says, I saw a clip of one of your Kung Fu videos on YouTube regarding the drunken style Kung Fu of fighting. Your videos are very well pre uh, presented and taught in a style of teaching I understand. So I wondered if there's any DVDs available on this topic. I saw the Kung Fu DVDs you have on the website, but wasn't sure if the style is included in those DVDs. We do not have a drunken DVD yet, but that'll be after the Yi Jin Jing. So I'm gonna have, the next DVD is Chain Whip, then we'll have uh, Yi Jin Jing, then we'll have Tiger, and then we'll go on to the drunken style DVD. The Drunken Style is, I won't put everything I know in the DVD because it's just, it's so much material. Uh, we'll have Beginner Drunken, Intermediate Drunken, Advanced Drunken. We'll have a DVD with just the Drunken Conditioning, one with the Drunken Form, we have some ideas. Because the Drunken System, I could literally open up a school right now that only does Drunken. There's so much conditioning, history, stories, fighting techniques, weapons, and Tao Lu or Kata that is specifically from Drunken, it's an immense style. So I would say that you're right to favor and want to do the Drunken style, but, um, and the DVD will be coming out sometime in early 2015. So the other DVDs we have right now are great starting points, and the DVDs like Tai Chi, the Iron Bone DVD we have on the website, is a great starting point because it will strengthen you in a way that you need in order to be able to perform Drunken Kung Fu most effectively. So get started now, don't wait. Okay, you guys, we have one page left, two pages left. The last page is short. It's a long video right now, but I wanna to get to all these uh, questions. We've been saving a lot of these up for a while and my wife just uh, put this on here and gave it to me and I'm just reading them now for the first time. The next one is from Kevin and it says, Hello, Sifu, I am Kevin Miles. I train in Tang Sudo, and I've been tra having trouble with, with my groin, specifically the adductors and abductors. I do kicks and stretching, however, I've learned that just stretching weakens the muscles. Can you please help me out? And if you have any videos on YouTube, or if you can grant me some of your wisdom, that would help a lot. Yes, Kevin, I totally agree with you. I think that when I have students or customers of mine that come to me with a, with, a, with a hurt area of the body, like the groin, a lot of the time, actually probably most of the time, it's not needing to be stretched, it's needing to be strengthened. It's very important. So whether it's your back or your hamstrings or your wrists or your groin, a lot of times stretching is not the answer, it's strengthening. And doing strengthening exercises and activities that encompass a full range of motion, which is why I like doing things like a low, deep, deep, deep horse stance where your thighs are flat and your butt is as low, maybe even one inch lower than your knees. So a low horse stance, working on that depth. Also, one-legged squats, or called pistol squats, are fantastic. Get two chairs and put one palm on each of those two chairs with your body in the middle, one leg out in front of you, and do one leg squats, keeping your squat leg completely flat on the ground, the foot flat. Do not let your heel come up. Go on YouTube and type in one leg squat Jake Mace, or type in uh, one leg squats uh, for Kung Fu or something. You should find some more videos about that. And I also have a couple really good dynamic kicking and dynamic flexibility workout videos on our YouTube channel. So go on there and type in Jake Mace flexibility workout and usually um, when you get my, there's a video called, type in Jake Mace Flexibility on YouTube, and there's a video where the thumbnail is me in the splits, 
and my head is down so you can see my blonde hair and I'm wearing sunglasses in the video. That's my favorite flexibility video. It's like 20, 30 minutes long. It's a great workout and it encompasses stretching techniques that will make you stronger and flexible at the same time because it's about being able to use the flexibility, not just have the flexibility. So I think that strengthening your groin with low horse stance type drills, one leg squats, and active flexibility workouts is really important. Plus giving yourself some time to heal. You, know, you might need to take a, a week off once in a while just to let your body kind of you know, replenish itself. So great question. The next question from Griffin. Hey Jake, I'm very interested in Chinese martial arts and philosophy, but I don't know where to start training. My number one concern is my lack of flexibility and difficulty with meditation. If you have any routines or advice, I would, I would appreciate it. Thanks a lot. So, martial arts philosophy and uh, lack of flexibility and meditation. Okay. Very, very beginner level basic answers. Meditation. Find five minutes a day to, to do it. And put your phone away, turn it on silent, turn it off and put it in a different room. Don't listen. Sometimes when it's on silent, you can still hear that vibration of the phone. It's so distracting. So get the phone out of there. Get in a room or in a place in nature where, you're, where you can be still and relaxed and literally do five minutes. If you are concerned about the time, maybe you can use your phone and set a timer on it so that it beeps at you when five minutes is over. Uh, so, and I want you to just sit in a chair or sit cross-legged on the floor and have your back straight and you're gonna focus on taking a five to eight second breath in and a five to eight second breath out. And do that over and over again for five minutes in a row. And that's how you will start your journey toward being a meditator, okay? Next, flexibility, stretch while you're hot, while you're warm, in the middle or the end of your workout while you're sweating, and cut dairy products out. Don't eat anything to do with cows. Cow's milk is for cows, human milk is for humans. If you're not gonna drink milk from your mom anymore, then don't drink it from a cow anymore either. Get your calcium and your nutrients from plants and fruits. Uh, and grains and beans and rices, legumes and everything plant-based. Let's see here. Chinese philosophy. Yep, keep following our YouTube channel. We have a lot of philosophy mixed in with our videos. Uh, one thing I'll say for Chinese philosophy is a couple quotes that are really good is like a moving hinge gathers no rust, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Do activities that will allow you to be youthful and physical for a long period of time. I think anything that you're doing that is, a lot of my friends that in the martial arts that say, hey Jake, I, I love that you do martial arts. I used to do that, but you know, I'm just too old now. My body has got a lot of pain from my old martial art practice. Where my body's broken down from years of martial arts. Um, I usually just am polite and I nod and I say like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But in my head I'm going, that's, that's, that's bullshit. You know, if you, if you are training correctly, and you have the right diet, and you have the right balance in your training to rest ratios, yin and yang. The yin yang is the most recognized symbol of martial, arts, of martial artists out there. You have to have equal parts flour and sugar and equal parts tai chi and workout, equal parts rest and workout, equal parts external and internal. So make sure you're training in a way that encourages range of motion and encourages strength that you can use for your entire life. Make sure you rest and make sure you fuel your body with the right foods that will allow you to be um, as physical for as long a period as you want. I want to be over a hundred years old someday and still training martial arts uh, to the hardest ability that I can. That's my goal. So let's see here. Next, we have John, and John says, I'm in Kentucky and thinking about ordering one of your Tai Chi DVDs, but I'm confused. I'm told that Tai Chi will interfere with my strength training program of building muscle. Not sure how, but I'm told to do yoga instead. I would rather do Tai Chi, for I have been studying Chinese Kempo for years, and I feel it would be a, be a better fit. I got a younger fella chasing my wife. So, is this the same question? Yeah. I have a younger fella chasing my wife. 
so I'm getting back into building my muscles for my wife. Nice. I would love to get into Tai Chi, but I'm focused, but I'm confused as to what it will do with my dumbbell routines. If you have any insight, I would love to hear it. John, this is an awesome question. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. <laughs> so, uh, I love Kentucky. I've been to Kentucky a few times. I love Kentucky. I think Kentucky is a beautiful place. I even went to the, the Ryder Cup golf tournament in 2008 when it was at Valhalla. I love Kentucky, man. I think Kentucky is like, like salt of the earth, God's country. I would love to have a, you know, some land in Kentucky and uh, live there part time. So, Tai Chi will not impact your dumbbell routines. Tai Chi will not impact negatively your strength training program. And think of it this way. If you replace your strength training program with Tai Chi, yeah, it'll, it'll impact your strength training because Tai Chi is not the same as bodybuilding. Tai Chi is not the same as dumbbells and Tai Chi is not the same as working out in a gym. But you don't have to do one or the other. You can do both together. And so I always tell students, if you're gonna go to the gym and work out with the weights for an hour, then when your workout is done, go in a private aerobics room at the, at the gym or go to a park right afterward and do Tai Chi for half an hour. Because Tai Chi is a benefit to workout because it allows your muscles to relax, it allows your mind to relax, and it allows you to maintain a musculature system and a muscle structure that will allow you to move like a human being should move. It'll allow you to make physical movements that are very much in accord with day-to-day -day activities. I think that Tai Chi training is like training for life. It's like allowing you to do yard work and be with your kids and be with your wife in a better way because you know how to flow, man. You know how to, you know how to move. You know how to use it, right? Which your, which your wife might like that you know how to use it. So using those Tai Chi flowing muscles and taking those dumbbell muscles you'll be developing and using them in a soft flowing way, I think is crucial and very important. Plus, uh, you always wanna be the softest of the soft and the hardest of the hard. So your dumbbell workout is the hard and your Tai Chi is the soft. I think that if you, uh, Think about that when you're approaching your fitness routine. Be soft when you need to be soft and be hard when you need to be hard. You'll have the best of both worlds and Tai Chi is the soft part and your dumbbells are the hard part. So do it, man, do it. Yoga's good too. Yoga is also very, very good. It's all good, man, it's all good. Good luck with your wife. I hope that you can uh, uh, be the best form of yourself you can possibly be for her. That'd be awesome. Next, from Danny. Hi bro, I'm from, I'm from Singapore, nice. I watch your videos and subscribe to your channel on YouTube. I'm interested in, to learn from you through online training. There are different forms of Kung Fu. Which one is really the, the best? I read from Bruce Lee, quote, that Choi Le Fu is the best art to fight more than one person. Ooh, please do reply to me and God bless. Hey Danny, I've always wanted to go to Singapore. I've been to China so many times um, I've always wanted to go to Singapore. I think the Chinese, they say Xinjiapo. Uh, so I've always wanted to go to Singapore. I've heard it's really beautiful there. And um, no, Bruce Lee is wrong. <laughs> Bruce Lee, uh, if Bruce Lee, I've never heard that quote before, but if Bruce Lee said that Choi Le Fu is the best art to fight more than one person, that's not right. I mean, there are so many factors. It depends on the person. It depends on the teacher. It depends on the quality of the people who are attacking you. There's so many different, it depends that you can't say which martial art is the best, you know? It, I've always been somebody that says, you know, the teacher is important, not the martial art. And if you take Tai Chi or boxing or Taekwondo or Krav Maga or MMA or Kung Fu or Wushu or Wing Chun, and you only want to learn how to fight multiple opponents with that one art, you're gonna be fantastic at multiple opponent fighting. So I think that it's whatever you put your focus into. If you love what you do, keep training it. And if you wanna be good against multiple opponents, then approach that aspect of your martial art. So I think that um, Hungar, Choi Le Fu, uh, whatever kind of Kung Fu, Wing Chun, 
Southern Northern Fist animal style internal external empty hen weapon. Whatever you want to learn, whatever style of kung fu you want to do, they're all fantastic. Um, but that's why it's called a martial art. The martial part is the fighting part, and the art part is the way that you convey it to yourself and to the world. So be an artist, man. At the same time, you're a warrior. Do both. Be an artist warrior. All right, guys. There is only two questions left. I'm sorry this video is so long. Oh, my God. Next is from Santiago. Hey Jake, could you please teach how to be a snake stylist or if you don't have the time, just give me some tips in one of your videos. Thanks. Greetings from Mexico. Mexico. Yes. Que onda, mi amigo? Uh, I love um, snake style kung fu and we're going to have a lot of snake style coming up, which we haven't put a lot of yet, but it's a more advanced style of Chinese animal kung fu. So I want you guys to stay tuned on YouTube and stay tuned on our uh, subscription channel at jakemace.com because a lot of snake style is to come. I'm planning on teaching for a long time, so I don't just want to like vomit out everything I've ever learned in the first day. You know, it's about a process of learning. I'm, I'm giving, we have almost 700 videos on our YouTube channel, and we have almost 100 videos at jakemace.com, and if you include DVDs, we're already over 200 videos. So I think that we have a lot of stuff out there. Start learning now and snake style kung fu, which is really amazing, will be here before you know it. It's a very traditional animal style of Chinese kung fu, and it's, it's an advanced style. So stay tuned. Next, uh, this guy says, what would be your best remedy, food, martial arts, or other, for inability to focus and lack of energy? I'm working on decaffeinating my lifestyle to get some of that energy back, but I really think Tai Chi is going to help so much with my energy. What do you think? Burnout is just killing me right now. It's so bad I can't even muster the energy to cook my own meals. Literally. Wow. It's weird how when I was a kid, I, I would do plumbing work with my dad and get home feeling exhausted but rejuvenated. Now, after a day of intensive programming, I feel just absolutely horrible in every way. It's so bizarre. Thanks, man. Hope you and your wife have a fantastic evening from, from Dane. Dude, this is a great question. So, this is a, an important question to me right now because... Um, right now, I'm teaching uh, 11 classes a week at a software company in North Scottsdale. So this company is called Axosoft, and they do software development. And I go in there every day of the weekday, and I teach a variety of classes, whether it's martial arts or fitness-related boot camp style classes or yoga classes. And um, I also go in there from time to time, and I teach presentations on juicing and smoothies and uh, wheatgrass and healthy teas like kombucha and things. And I'm trying to increase the health of that company. Because, yeah, because if you're a programmer and you're working hard, like, like a lot of hours in a day, that is exhausting, man. I mean, like, you are basically doing zero for your physical body, but you're doing 100% for your mental body. And so sitting there programming, doing all your coding all day, is such exhausting work. When I'm editing YouTube videos and I'm building our website, I do, our, I do all jakemace.com myself. It's exhausting, man. That's the stuff that makes me exhausted. When I'm training Kung Fu stuff, that's stuff that makes me energized. So I really feel you. I think that programming is, is really an admirable work because programming is the future, man. I mean, you guys are doing uh, things with your work that makes life easier and worth living. So I love it. I love the software stuff. So. Uh, like check out that company Vidlar. I mean, we're doing our online school on Vidlar because it's so easy just to upload videos. You guys sign up for five bucks a month as a subscription. Boom, we're training together. It's awesome. Software is ruling the world. I love it. But when you get home from work and you can't make your own food, it's because you're mentally exhausted. Don't forget, you're not physically exhausted. I don't think, unless you're running on a treadmill while you're writing code all day. <laughs> okay, so. The mind and the body and the spirit. We always talk about those three things in the martial arts. Mind, body, and spirit. If the mind is out of chi or out of energy, the body and the spirit also will be out of energy. You'll have no motivation for good ideas. You'll have no goals. and You'll have no uh, energy to work out your body because your mind is dead. So I think that that's the reason why I'm teaching at, um, at Axosoft because the people who come to my class, they jump into one of my classes and they get to work out doing some fun stuff like yoga, fitness, or martial arts, and they leave energized. Their body got to work out. Their mind got to relax. 
and it put them more into balance. So here's some tips. I think number one, you've got to get good nutrition in your body because believe it or not, even if you're not physically working out, uh, doing programming, you're mentally working out and you're burning a lot of calories mentally. So you got to get yourself some really high nutrient dense smoothies and food. Uh, I'd really recommend if you can make a smoothie at home so that you know exactly what's in it and blend that sucker up in your blender and throw in fruit in there so it tastes good like bananas and grapes and uh, mangoes and strawberries and things like that. But you also want it to have the nutrient density. So put in your kale and your spinach and your beet greens and your herbs like your basil and your mint. That will also make it taste really good. Throw in a cucumber in there and put in just enough fruit where it tastes great. Maybe a tablespoon of peanut butter. Just enough fruit so it tastes good and it hides the taste of the vegetables. That's gonna be super important so that your body has gas in the gas tank that's the highest octane gas there is, okay? Number two, it's gonna be important for you to walk away from your computer at least once an hour. So make a commitment that at least once an hour you will stand up and walk around your office or your facility for at least one to five minutes. You have to do this, it's important, it's pivotal. I mean, you cannot sit down and be stagnant for more than an hour at a time. It literally will make your blood vessels collapse and it will ruin your entire physical quality of life and your mind will get fried. You're an animal. You are not a software programmer. You're an animal, like a dog. And if dogs stay laying down all day, when you get home, they'll be fucking crazy. They'll be all nuts and just jittery and needing to run. They'll be really bad and misbehave and they'll go crazy. After a dog goes to a dog park and runs it out or goes to a long hike and gets exhausted, they are the most loving, calm, and in control animal there is. And humans are the exact same thing. I want you to get up once every hour during your work day and for one to five minutes walk around for one to five minutes and while you're walking around I want you to not have your phone, no phone, no Facebook, no checking the phone in the, in the pocket. I want you to breathe and you're going to work on that five to eight second inhale through the nose of and then that five to eight second exhale through the mouth of you can do it with your eyes open as you're walking around. Nobody will know you're doing this. They'll just think you're getting a drink of water or going to the bathroom. Nobody's even gonna care because they're gonna be focused on their computer just typing it out. Once every hour, for one to five minutes, walk around with the eight second meditative inhale and exhale, and then sit back down. I'm, I'm hoping that the increase in oxygen, the increase in blood flow from the walking around, and the mental break from your computer will be the three ways that you'll get home with a little more energy. Oh, also the smoothie or the nutrient dense food. Those four things combined, breathing, walking, break from the computer every hour, and a nutrient dense meal like a smoothie, those are gonna be your secrets to getting home with more energy and more of a balance between your mind, your body, and your spirit, because right now you're all mind. There we go, that's my secret. Hope you guys uh, liked this episode. If you liked episodes like this, please hit the like button. Check out jakemace.com right now and go to my Facebook at facebook.com slash jakemace.taichi and uh, I'm on Instagram at jakemacetaichi. Jakemacetaichi, that's my Instagram name. And I'm really loving that you guys are watching. I think it's so cool that we're touching you guys from all over the world and there's more to come. I would love in the future to visit uh, the cities who let me know in the comments below what city you're watching from and let me know what city you're in watching from because I would love to go to those cities and do some seminars there like Germany seems to be a lot of people watch this from Germany so that'd be so cool I would love to go to Germany and do a kung fu seminar there thanks for watching guys I will see you in the next episode and uh, don't forget if you want to have your question answered in a video like this email me at jakemace.com or at facebook.com slash jakemace.taichi. See you next time.